What is going on, bro? Welcome to the video. If you've been following my journey for a minute, then you know, just a few years ago, in my mid-20s, I was working as a personal trainer, trying to figure it out, barely making any money. Like, I think it was like 20,000 a year for a couple of years. And if you fast forward to now, well, the different businesses that I've started are generating over a couple million dollars per year. And I don't say that to brag. I say that because along the way, there's a few difficult decisions that I had to make, a few habits that I had to form that were not easy for me. And if I hadn't done those things, like chances are I'd still be broke. So I always tell people that I started my YouTube channel back in 2017, but really, if you look back to the first few videos uploading the channel, it was like 2014, and it's some, some cringy ass shit. And that was right during those personal training years after I'd quit that entry-level software job I had. And I truly wanted to get into YouTube and start a YouTube channel, but I was intimidated by not knowing which camera to get. If I tried to look in the mirror and talk like a YouTuber, I felt really cringy and embarrassing. I was afraid I'd upload videos of people from my past or my friends would see them and laugh at me behind my back. This is a trap that's so easy to fall into where you're thinking about doing something new and you're just like, oh my God, I don't know if I should do it or not. And what I realized eventually is that in these situations, you're not really deciding, should I do this or not? You're deciding, should I do this or should I do something else? Because by definition, if you're not doing something, you're gonna follow a different path in life. It's not like, should I do YouTube? And if I don't do YouTube, I'm just gonna, you know, Thanos myself out of existence. That's not how it works. Like by not committing to do YouTube at that point, I made the decision to follow a clear, different path where I was doing this balance of personal training and blogging that was not fulfilling me. What you need to do is ask yourself, if I don't do this, what is my next best alternative? Because now it's a decision between A or B that's a lot easier mentally, and you just have to think, which of these things is gonna get me closer to my desired result? And this is not only about career decisions. You know, I used to always see a girl in the gym or in class repeatedly, and I'd be like, oh man, should I approach her or not? It might be embarrassing, I might get rejected, people might see me, and then I just, I'd be paralyzed and do nothing. In this case, what's your next best alternative? Uh, there's, there's not really a great one, right? Like the bigger decision you're making here is should I take advantage of these opportunities and try and talk to girls I, I'm interested in or should I just not? Whenever I see these opportunities, just not take them. And the real decision then is should I start to slowly meet women even if there's some pain or should I commit to living a single lonely life where I'm not meeting anyone new? It's a decision even if you're not realizing it. And the main place to really pay attention with this is what you're doing with your money. Maybe you're considering renting an apartment and it's 2,000 per month and you're like, oh my God, that's a lot. I could be losing 2,000 per month. Okay, well, what's your next best alternative? Is it living with your parents and saving that money, but maybe you know, you're know you miserable during that time and that money just sits in your account anyway? Or lately there's blood in the streets when it comes to the stock market and crypto and maybe you're thinking, should I invest in crypto now but I don't wanna lose a bunch of money? Okay, what's your next best alternative? Well, maybe you could invest in an index fund that's a little bit safer, less volatile, still a little volatile lately. Maybe you could invest in a COD that's very safe or interest rates are coming up. Maybe you put it into a savings account where you get a few percent. It's not just crypto or nothing. What's your next best option? So growing up, I was someone who was extremely frugal. If I had to buy lunch, I'd go to McDonald's, it'd be two McDoubles, a four piece McNugget, that's $3, just give me a glass, I'm gonna get the water for free. And it, I'm not saying that didn't serve me well, because as I've talked about before, squirrel mode is very important. Until you're at the point where you have like three to six months of your expenses saved up, you're always gonna be operating in survival mode and you're gonna be afraid be because there is like a realistic chance that, that you couldn't pay for things. But at some point, that mindset starts to fuck you like even once i got to the point where i had maybe let's say 50k in, in my bank account i was still operating from this mindset that no matter what i do that number can't go down that number can only go up i'm not gonna pay anyone shit. for a long time when i was releasing my workout programs or confidence courses i would spend straight weeks building out the website myself distracting me from doing other things because i don't want to pay someone a thousand dollars to build a website i would not put a cent into the stock market because bro who knows the stock market it could go down tomorrow and i could lose that money maybe i'll put a little in the savings account but for the most part i'm just gonna let it stack up in my checkings now in 2022 everybody's woke now and people are trying to normalize Normalize everything you can think of but something that you do want to normalize is losing money and I know that sounds a little bit crazy but in your head like in my head probably one of the biggest breakthroughs I had with my money was getting used to losing money seeing the numbers on the screen go down 
and not freaking out about it. Like I remember beginning of 2020, before all this shit hit the fan, I put a big chunk of money, 100K or something into stocks. And like a month later it was down 20K and I, I couldn't sleep bro for like, for like a week straight. And it wasn't like I was about to, to go homeless or something. I just, I couldn't bear seeing those numbers go down. And the funny thing is over the past couple months, like I wish that I was 20,000 down. We're well over six digits down the last couple months. And that's why I had to realize like they really are just numbers on a screen. Like in 2022, they're not even backed by gold anymore. There are numbers on the screen that you can trade for other things that a lot of times are more valuable than some numbers on the screen. Sometimes even just like a nice vacation to spend time, get some new experiences with friends, you know, relax, release some steam. That's more valuable than maybe a thousand of those numbers on the screen. Maybe those numbers could be traded to relocate yourself to somewhere you're gonna be much happier and have way more opportunities for your career. Maybe they could be traded to, to, to learn a new skill that could allow you to make way more money. Maybe you just move some of those numbers into an investment account where you're hoping that they go up over time. But guess what? Sometimes they go down and you, you have to be okay with it. You have to get over the, the stress and emotional connection to it or you're never gonna put yourself in the position to be able to make more money. A little fit check for the grant. We're not on the grant for the tube. Check out, we get the Yeezys down below, fresh edge, edge. But really, what's making this outfit pop right now is the wrist. It's all about the details. Julia, tell them. Yeah, girls really notice these like small little touches. Which is why the good news is that today's video is sponsored by Vincero Collective. The watch I'm wearing is their Apex watch. It's powered by the impressive VK64 Mecha Quartz engine from Seiko. And it just looks bold, masculine, and straight up badass. And this bracelet's from their new jewelry line, crafted from genuine sterling silver. Just looks classy. Vincero also offers necklaces and sunglasses, all ethically made with the same rigorous quality control as their watches. And because Vincero is sponsoring today's video, you know that they're hooking it up. If you use my code at checkout, you're gonna save 20% off the entire website plus free shipping. Just click that first link down in description description to see my favorite watches that I own on their website. God, it's leg day. Gains, bro. Shirt stays on. Gains were made. So y'all know about a month or two ago, we were in Spain, we were looking at this villa in Marbella. It was beautiful, great pool to do backflips in. And we were really close to pulling the trigger. Like we wanted to make the down payment on that house. And then we came across this website with uh, an owner who had bought one of the other villas from the same developer and had these, these leaks, these water damage, all this roof damage that had happened. And we just wanted to ignore it and, and like get it anyway because it, it checked all our boxes. And that's human psychology, right? When we really want something, we, we tend to put on blinders and ignore the obvious doubts or red flags. Like, oh my God, that house seems perfect. That car seems perfect. I don't, I don't wanna know about the bad stuff. Or bro, you gotta, you gotta check out this dope investment opportunity. This new, this new altcoin, this new NFT. And don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry. You're gonna make money. You're gonna make money. Or with girls, even she's still talking to her ex. You know, she goes out on girls' nights. But, but you know, she's a really awesome girl. She's super hot. She's into me. Like it's gonna be all good. Or we tend to take it to the other extreme and be like, oh my god, there's one little thing that seems off about this house. I'm out. Oh my god, that girl posted a weird selfie on Instagram. That doesn't seem like the right type of girl. She took two hours to respond to my text. I'm not dealing with this shit. The stock market dropped a little last month. This is not worth it. It's easy to go to the extremes and just to be all in on some opportunity and hope for the best or to be all out on something because it seems a little bit stressful well, what's harder to do but i've learned is the right thing to do is to calmly explore each doubt that you have and see if there's a way to to kind of hedge your bet against that doubt if there's something you can do differently or to see if it really matters in the first place or maybe it is a deal breaker so with that house i brought it up with the broker for the developer and i was like hey man you know i saw these photos and stuff what's going on he was like yo don't worry about it man they're using a different architect a different construction company now you're gonna be all good I was like, all right, that sounds good. But like in the case that something like this were to happen, these people are saying that the developer just like took months and months to fix this. How do I know that's not gonna happen? And he was like, oh, don't worry about it. Like if they're using a different construction company, it's gonna be all good. And he wasn't really able to give me the reassurance, even though there is like a structural warranty, that that that, that would be taken care of. So that doubt it ended up being something 
that was a deal breaker and we were like, you know, we like this house, but it's gonna be better for us to be a little more patient, search for a better opportunity. And where this happens a lot is if I'm considering hiring an agency to, to work with for like advertising for Edge or anything like that, I might say, you know, okay, what happens if after a month, we're not seeing the type of results that, that we want to expect here. Or do you have anyone else I can talk to to verify that? Any doubt in my head, I'm gonna ask, you know, what do we do if this happens? How do I know this is gonna happen? And basically it's on them to convince me to work with them and to relieve all of my doubts. And if they can't do that, well, obviously it's not the right opportunity. What you just witnessed with your own eyes. Oh my God. Sometimes your hair gets hilarious with those. That may be the last skid, the last e-bike shot you ever see on this channel. Don't tell anyone. To make a long story short, it's gonna be probably too long of a story, so just eventually you'll understand. So I remember I was living with the homie Dave back in Boston, pre-YouTube days, the small little apartment, and that's when I created the first products I sold online. There were some fitness programs, some confidence courses, and the way that I would sell these would be at the bottom of each of my articles on my blog, there'd be a little box that said, you know, if you're looking for more help with this, just enter your email below and we'll send you our free approach anxiety cheat sheet so you can get better at talking to girls. And then you'd receive our email autoresponder, it's called, where you'd get three to five emails. At first, we'd send you a couple other articles that would be useful to you. And then after that, we'd give you the option to buy the program. And once I built the program, I started focusing like all of my energy for weeks, for months probably, just tweaking these email autoresponders, like changing sentences, moving the link from the middle to the bottom. And not that that was completely useless, but like, it, it wasn't that useful. Like there were far bigger levers that I could have spent my time on. For example, getting more people into the funnel by writing more articles, by doing some paid advertising on Google or Facebook, or maybe by starting YouTube earlier. You have to ask yourself, what is the most important activity I can spend my time on that's going to increase our bottom line the most right now for example with edge you know there was a time when we started it that i was answering the customer support emails myself that i was physically packing and shipping the orders myself with, with julia's help to be fair but like it would be stupid if i spent my time doing that now there was some value in doing it up front to kind of learn learn the business but it would be stupid now the most important things that i should be spending my time on probably number one is youtube right because these videos attract a bigger audience and once you guys watch the videos you see how dope the clothes are like it brings people in the door and with edge what are the biggest levers it's not the emails or packing the orders it's the creative direction of the brand so designing the new launches working on those when it's time for the new launch coming up with a plan for the content because that's the stuff that, that that's like people's first look into the new clothes that, that gets people in the door it's just such an easy trap to fall into to keep doing the same tasks because you're used to doing them or because they're simpler to do but like if you don't focus on the most important items it's going to be very difficult to see that growth and to see more money being made i mean honestly that's that's what held me back for, for years at the beginning Even after all the hate comments, I'm still keeping it gangsta. Cut in pizza the right way that it's meant to be cut with a pair of scissors. Look at that. Ooh, smooth cuts every time. We did upgrade to a not pre-made crust. This is not the best cut I've ever done, I'll be honest. <laughs> Julia, your pizza is the, what is wrong with I you? I hand cr created this dough. Eight out of 10. Last and most importantly, when you're making a decision, don't focus so much on like how much money am I going to make or lose over the next day, week, or month and challenge yourself to look more. You know, again, assuming you have that, that three month safety net, challenge yourself more to think, what is this going to do for me over the next six months, 12 months? Or honestly, in the case of investing into the stock market, it's like, what is this money going to do for me over the next 20 to 25 years? Again, it comes down to us being risk averse and, and humans psychologically, we're more likely to want to avoid losing a dollar than finding a dollar. They, they've done studies that confirm that. When you get into paid advertising like Facebook or Instagram ads, it's normal at first to lose money while you figure out you know what performs well and, and optimize from there and on top of that unless i'm trying to like run the ads myself which again i, I did that at first and i didn't do a great job uh, i'm also paying an agency now for their time to monitor the ads and help me optimize them so it's really a short-term loss a loss of money but long term you know the money that's spent in ads provides a much bigger return again over maybe six to 12 months when we send out some clothes to an edge influencer that we're hoping to work with 
a lot of times that's just lost money, lost inventory. We paid the shipping, we spent time talking to them and it doesn't work out more times than not. But when it does work out, you know, the return from working with that influencer over six to 12 months, it's gonna be positive. If you missed my last video about how I made my first million, you definitely wanna check that out. I'll drop a link in description. In that video, I go really in depth on all the work that I did behind the scenes for the first five to six to seven years before any return really started happening. And if you're trying to actually start your own business, a lot of the time you have to challenge yourself not just to look two to three weeks into the future, but, but maybe two to three years. We're about to chill out and, and watch this rental ambulance. We meant to see it in theaters. Michael Bay, Jake Gyllenhaal, Julia's still eating her pizza somehow. I'm sorry, brother. I'm sorry that I brought you into this. I just wanted things to be the way they used to be. You know how some movies are like too slow and they get kind of boring? This was the opposite of that. There's like two hours and 20 minutes of like, <gasps> High blood pressure. What's your score? It was intense. I cried at the end. I would definitely give it like a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10. Ambulance. Recommend it. If you made it to the end of this video, give it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you, bro. Hit that thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, click subscribe and turn notifications on because I drop two new videos every single week and you don't want to miss them. I will talk to all of y'all in the next video. Stay Beastly.